Okie doke, hello. Welcome to Love Swimming Workshop again. Uh, hopefully all's going well and we're live. And fingers crossed, we'll have a live stream without any, uh, without any problems. Right, you can see on the bench here, we've got the progress that we've made so far on this year's spoon. We got it secured in the vise as normal and yeah, we're ready to roll. Hopefully the sound is okay. Um, yeah, we've got Yelly as always checking that in the background. What I'm gonna have a little look at today, all going well, is this around the outside here, this twist on the stem. So we've done a lot of the top half, although I'd like to go back over it, maybe do it a bit deeper and to um, sand it as well, just to sort of finish it off. So that's something that we're hoping to do. And I'm going to work my way around there. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to move it up in the vise because I'm going to work on this shape here. This is like, for anybody who doesn't know, this is like a Celtic twist, a Celtic weave, that sort of effect. Um, so first thing I'll do, I'll select the right shape gouge that I want, possibly not that one. We will go for, um, I think this shape, is that a better shape? Yeah, I think so. So excuse the banging because we've just got to do a few of our stop cuts. So we're just going to get that shape. Uh, for anybody who hasn't seen what we're doing so far, this is our spoon to record the year. We're working in a piece of sycamore. Recycled wood that I found in a drawer. I found it in a drawer, um, piece of wood that I found, um, it was an off cut from a love spoon that we originally made as our year to record 2001. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the bottom shape of the twist, but this will also create the shape of the, the stem. So our, the neck of our spoon will sort of taper into that twist, just like so. So we're just going to take a little bit of depth using that stop cut as a barrier. So basic sort of wood carving skills, you use that stop cut as your barrier just to give it a little bit of um, a little bit of depth. So I'm just cutting into there. I will then angle it. Um, this is something then as well. When you're sort of hand carving, because I know there's um, different methods of making uh, love spoons and all sorts of different things now, you'll see people using uh, things like CNC's. You, you, you'll see the shape of the cut. It's different if you're using something like a CNC. It's also different if you're using something like the, uh, the Dremels. That's become quite a popular method of carving. At different times we have used a Dremel ourselves and especially on our spoon for the year. I don't get on with it myself, to be honest with you, so. Excuse the banging again. That's why I stick with the hand carving. I know Dad has had a bit more success with using things like the Dremel for carving than myself, but I, I don't know, I just never got into it, is the truth of it. I hope everybody's had a, a decent week. We're just at the end of lockdown here in Wales, so. We're going to be a little bit more free. The workshop officially can open tomorrow, but we're not anticipating seeing many people, to be honest with you, but we will officially be uh, able to have people in from tomorrow onwards. Um, in terms of what we're working on at the moment, we've got different bespoke spoons. We're working on a few different things towards uh, Christmas as well. I just noticed a comment on that. Excuse me two seconds. I'm hoping that's Yelly telling me everything's okay. It is. I'm glad you like the spoon, Yelly. There we are. Now today as well, we had a love spoon ordered and that's going out to um, Arizona. And the interesting bit with that love spoon that we've had ordered, that's, um, that's a piece of wood that's come from La Mancha in central Spain. You may have heard me referring to it in some of our videos. So it's ended up where it's traveled from La Mancha in central Spain. It's come to Wales. We've turned it into a love spoon and now it's off to Arizona. So it always fascinates me to have a little look 
at where our love spoons end up. The, the same wood, we made one love spoon back in the summer in that wood that ended up going out to France. Um, and of course we have, you know, spoons going all, all over the UK. That's one thing that we like to do with the, with the different love spoons that go out to places like America. I quite enjoy having a little check on uh, Google Maps, that sort of thing, and see where, where our love spoons end up. So as you can see what we're doing then, we're getting that shape of the twist, we're getting that basic outline, uh, but we're also giving a bit of depth to the, the stem, the neck of the, the love spoon. And it just, yeah, it, 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 it sort of gives us that shape to work from. So as we're working on the lower part of the twist, it's just a little bit easier. I, know, I prefer it to do this, it, this way around, get that shape first before we start working on where, where we create that effect of the twist. Now basically, when it comes to doing Celtic twists, Celtic knots, the effect that, well, I always try and create is, is a, an over and under. So half, where you do these down cuts, those are the bits that go under, and then this piece is the bit that goes over. So that's the, the effect that you're trying to create. So some of the films, um, sorry, some of the videos, not films, that we're working on at the moment. We've got, uh, we just released we, our video, our Christmas scroll saw video. That's proving quite popular. And hopefully that's useful giving ideas for different things that you can make, uh, especially for Christmas. Always think it's a bit extra special when it comes to presents and gifts, if you can actually make them yourself. So we've released that video now because if we wait too long, then nobody will be able to benefit from it. It'll be too late for you to have a go at making those things for, for Christmas. Uh, we've also then been working on a video, which in some ways for myself, there we are, it's this here. I'll just open it up for you all to see. I bought a set of beginners gouges um, and I'll be honest when I bought them I had a few preconceived ideas for how the video would go and as often happens with these um, my preconceived idea didn't actually uh, work out so yeah keep an eye out for that video you'll see how we get on using some beginners gouges but it was an interesting, interesting thing to do. We've done a few different ones like that, excuse me, and sort of growing up around it, um, yeah, at different times I, uh, on, on some of the videos, I, I go into them and you have an idea in your head of how things are gonna go. And quite often it, it doesn't actually work out as you're, you're anticipating, but it's a good thing because you're always learning and you're always, um, Finding something new. Oh, hello. We got Thomas Woodcarver here with us now. Good evening. He's just returned from from down down the field behind. We had a, have you had a successful afternoon, Thomas Woodcarver? I'm just looking at him there. Sorry. Right. Have you spotted something that I haven't? He's very. He's come in. He's looking at it. He likes to do this. He's come in and he's looking at it. He's not saying anything. <clears throat> he's trying to make me nervous, but I'm not, I'm not particularly worried if, if, if you have seen something, to be honest with you. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> no, I just, when you, when you were going down there, right? I, I was just concerned that uh, you weren't following the twist, like, you know. Ah, uh, no, no, no. We put those lines on there before, before we start. Yeah. Always a useful thing to do. If you can put the guidelines on so you've got something to, to follow, it gives you those, those guidelines. To, to help you out. Yeah, we've been down the field, we've been looking after the next generation. You've been doing some tree planting? Well, more taking away some of the... Are you preparing it to yes, clear? More. You're clearing the way? Yeah. Brilliant. It's a, you know, it's a fact, there's a lovely oak tree down there. Yeah? It's about to, uh, three and a half, four feet tall. Right. Probably, let it, yeah, it could be three feet even. Yeah. Uh, it just needs moving from where it is into a better position. Right. 
And because um, of course we planted in there in recent years, probably about 15, 15 oak trees, wasn't it? Oh, you just got one more than that, I would think. Yeah. 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 I remember you you planted the three different types of trees together: the silver birch, the oak, and yeah. the hornbeam. Was it? And this one is a, just a natural. You know, it's, it's just. It's grown up from uh, a parent tree, and um, the way it's gone has been has fallen and uh, seeded. And it's grown from there. As you can see, we just explained to everyone what we're working on is the is this twist. So we're making progress on it. And I'm hoping as well, because I haven't heard anything from, uh, I've only heard from Yali that everything is fine. Yeah, I was in there, it sounded okay. Right, I look very interesting, Nina. Um, I, I've done something different in terms of setting up the microphone. So, oh, right. fingers crossed, I may, have, I may have found out our, our nemesis, our I'll, problem. I'll do an extra check now, okay? Yeah, yeah, great. So you can see we're making progress now. We've done the top of the the twist just as I'm, I'm going across the grain there a little bit just chewing here a little bit but I'm not worried about that because afterwards I come across there and I shape it like that anyway so we we it helps us there doing it in that style where you, you you carry on you're still sort of working with with the grain I got my jacket on I'm gonna take it off two seconds because uh, I'm getting a bit hot it's a good sign, working up a sweat. Shows that we're working. Um, yeah, I've, um, I had the jacket on, we're in winter now, see? So uh, I thought I'd need that, but once you get carving, that's the one thing. That's yeah. a good thing, just pointing out, I had to take my jacket off because I'm getting hot, and that's one thing. See, anybody interested in taking a wood carving, it can save you on heating. Because <laughs> you certainly do, uh, certainly do build up, build up a sweat well, it's potentially. it's quite interesting, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's quite mild out there at the moment. Yeah, it is. Uh, we've been down the field and uh, the gnats are biting. Well, you know, that's not right at this time of the year. No, it's strange, isn't it? We're still getting the wasps around as well. And it's a bit strange for, for November. A bit too, bit too mild, isn't it? Uh, you know, anybody interested in planting trees, yeah. you know, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit early yet to that little oak um, seedling. is a bit too early to pull it out at the moment. Yeah. The but leaves you, are still on it, just about, but the, you know, it is, I suppose you could. What would you say, another there. month and we're getting into the sort of tree planting season around here? Well, I, I think probably from any time now, Yeah. Um, I think you're okay. Yeah, in yeah. In this area. Yeah. Um, but of course, it, yeah, it depends the area you're in, depends the part of the world that you're in as well. Exactly. So as I'm doing this, just to explain a little bit about it as well, for any of you, you know, who are learning wood carving, interested in wood carving, what I'm trying to do is, as much as possible, I'm trying to work with the grain. And sometimes when you're sort of going across the grain, they're, they're, we use sort of a method. Well, I use a method. I don't know whether you use this as well. I, I, you almost sort of work diagonally in some ways. So you, you can, and you can sort of rock the gouge from the one side, start there and then come round. So it, by doing that, I find it reduces the amount of time that you're not working with the grain. Yeah. So uh, just, a, just a little technique for anybody learning wood carving. I'll just turn that round in the vice. Um, yeah. Well, wood wounds generally, you know, people, um, you know, a lot of love spoons are made out of lime. Yes. Uh, and so there's... there's Basswood for anyone in America. There aren't many knots in it. No. Uh, whereas, you know, we are, we are not afraid to use... Um, no, I was explaining... A we, few knots. Uh, I, I don't know, because you've been down the field all the afternoon. I was just explaining to everyone, we, there's, a, there's a wood and that, that can have quite a few knots in it. Um, the juniper that we have from yeah. La Mancha, yeah. we, we've just sold one. It's going out to Arizona. Right. There we are. So... Uh, yeah, so because of course at the moment the US very much in in our news here in, in the UK. Um, but I've seen it's fascinating to see the different parts where I have a little look on Google Maps to see all these different places that our love spoons end up going. Yeah. Fascinating. And this year we it's been a a difficult year, but at the same time we've had love spoons that have gone all over, haven't we? We did a yeah. And we very did it unusual as well. We've um, 
we've had them going to Australia, which is... Yeah, we got... Um, just this morning as well, we, we took an order uh, for a bespoke love spoon that's going out to New Zealand. Um, and as you said, it, it's one of those things, to be honest with you, anyone who's doing wood carving, that's something, if you're in the UK or the US, it's worth noting we don't actually send directly to Australia or New Zealand because of um, customs. They, they have sort of tighter rules out there. So we, we generally avoid it because there's always a, a very low percentage chance, but there is always a chance that customs refuse to, to let it through, isn't it? So something that we always make people aware of. But yeah, we've had a couple of loves. One, one earlier in the year went out to Australia. Um, this one now with New Zealand. We sent the love spoon to Hong Kong. Remember that one? That was for a wedding in, in Hong Kong. Um, we had that one to France. We've had, trying to think, where else have we sent them this year? We've had one that we sent out to Zimbabwe. Yeah, and it's very often people, you know, they come here and they take taking them abroad themselves, aren't they? That's right. Yeah, absolutely. That's quite often how, um, and it's quite often how sort of people find out, find out about us. But yeah, just an interesting part with the with what we do then is to see where where the different spoons go now this one we're just you can see we're we're working on this twist it's starting to take shape it's a nice part of the process because as you're carving you're taking that paper transfer off so again for any of you who are interested in um having a go at doing your own projects your own spoons and things like that what we do we do a paper drawing, we stick it to the wood, and then we let that dry, cut it all out using our scroll saw, our Hegna scroll saw, that is becoming a bigger and bigger part of our YouTube channel. Thank you to all of you who are supporting us with that. Um, yeah, and I'll just check that's that way around, so that's gotta be that way around. Uh, yeah, and after that, we bring it in here and we, we carve the spoon. I've been carving a little while, so I'm just going to refocus. There we are. If you just want to check with Yelly that that hasn't interrupted the sand, that would be great. So you can see we're well on our way through this twist, starting to take shape. And the love spoon itself is really starting to take shape. We've got to remark out our globe at the top because we've shaped the globe but we haven't actually carved the detail on there, so we will remark the detail. And that's something that you can do then, is to remark out all of your, your detail after you've sort of shaped it. It's always useful with the carving and with the scroll sawing, whatever you're doing, it's always useful to have those guidelines to follow. So that's something that, yeah, we always, we always use. All okay? Yeah, we're okay. Yeah, I think. At long last, I think I've, I've, I've figured out what the problem was. Dodgy cable. Oh, really? There we are. So hopefully now, and even next week with the live stream, we, we may have a go with um, a different camera. And that camera has got a better inbuilt sound, so we won't need the, the external cable. There we are. So you can see that shape. But yeah, it's lovely seeing that. Nice sort of um, colour coming through. Something I really like myself when working with sycamore and working with things like maple is to see that wood. I've got Thomas Wood Car, yep, you're in here now. We, we can see that wood coming through. I always think it's a really nice colour, nice sort of pure colour that you get with it, isn't it? Well, it, there's almost a, sometimes there's like a marble yeah. effect with it. Is it, is it the same family grouping, I'm thinking, uh, London Plain? Because with London Plain, it's similar, but it's just more pronounced, isn't it? I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think, the, uh, I think there is a, a family link there with them. Where are we up to? So we've gone that way there, and that means one, two, one. So this one, if we've gone that way, that means we've got to go this way. So as I'm working it out, what it is, my gouge has got ever so slight, it's got a slight bevel on it. So as I'm carving, I'm working out that I've turned the gouge that way. So to match it on the other side, I've got to turn my gouge that way. But I'm confusing myself now. Yeah, that is right. 
Yes, just like so. So that's what you try to do is to match it. It's not critical, but to, to get that sort of symmetry with the lines that you're marking, you're just trying to sort of work it out. How do I match that to the, to the other side? There we are. So as we go in round the side, we're just building up that twist, building up that shape. I think it's coming on quite, quite nicely. And the other thing you can do as well, when you're doing these, is to do all of them sort of uniform here. So you can look at the one that you've done, look at the direction that you've cut that, and then just, just copy it. So I think what I'm gonna do is to mark out a few stop cuts all along here. I will move that a little bit further down so you can all see it a little bit better. Sometimes as well, <clears throat> when, when I, you know, when I was doing some of the spoons, the early spoons, yeah, I would be getting to this stage, and because you've been doing the same um, process around that chain, yeah, um, I, I would change then and carve. Maybe I, I go over to the um, the lock. Yes, you know, I I because I'd be getting a bit. Fed you start up. getting a bit fed up with doing yeah. the yeah. yeah. Another thing as well, for any of you who are learning carving, um, I don't know whether you'd, what, what you'd refer to it as. I, I, I have heard people referring to it actually, like carver's block and things like this. So it, I think, you know, it's in a similar vein in terms of freshening things up, yeah. doing something different. Um, like I, I, my, my, I, think you, I think we just get to a stage where we're just used to what we do and we just sort of carry on and carry on. But yeah, somebody mentioned that they, they, they were pleased to have found the channel with, you know, where we got Love Spoon stuff because they'd never done it before and they thought that it would be yeah. a good one to get them over there sort of carver's well, it's block. It's the same with everything. I mean, I mean, down the field now, we've been clearing um, the drainage channels and we've been looking at planting some trees. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, you, you, you sometimes, I got a bit daunted down there because... So you the the drain hadn't been cleared properly for at least twenty years, and some of the, um, the what was the the tree down there that uh, causing a problem? Um, the oh, willow, the willow, yeah. The willow, you. It's quite interesting. You cut if you cut a willow and just drop the branch um, in a sort of wet area, that will re. See, it'll it'll keep growing. Yeah, you know. So of course, there'd been a, a willow tree dumped, did it? Or well, some of the tree because it hadn't been um, managed for so long. Um, the the willow had, had grown across the drainage channels. Yeah, and so it's quite fascinating really to see how and um, how it sprouts and keeps growing. Like you know, it, it's amazing stuff. It, timber is a incredible fantastic thing. material. Back on back on the carving as well, um, on the on the sort of points we're talking about, I always remember, and I don't get it very often now. Really, I suppose it does still happen when you get tired. But one problem I always remember having, you would be working on a carving. Let's take, for example, the dove here, okay? And you'd be carving that. And I, I as I said, it's, it, I don't find I have this problem any longer, but in years sort of gone by, when I was younger and things like that, I would be working on that as a carving and trying to get it right. And you'd be working on it and you keep doing a little bit and changing it and trying to get it right. And it wouldn't sort of, it wouldn't come together. You understand what I mean? Yeah. And you'd keep working on it and it, you wouldn't be happy with it. And it, it would be at the end of the day. So I suppose probably now, because I'm doing it, every day and I've done it for, for, for a lot longer. It doesn't happen any longer, so, well it does, but not very often. And you'd be going, no, I can't get that right, I can't get that right. And I find if you walked away from it, yeah. and then came back the following day, and you'd think, right, I'm gonna sort that out now. And quite often you'd look at it and you'd think, yeah, I'm gonna sort out the problem. And you wouldn't be able to remember the problem. No. So you'd be looking at it thinking, right, I know I've got a problem, but it's amazing how things can look different, you know, with, with sort of tired eyes and with fresh eyes then, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now I tend to, 
I tend to have gone the opposite way where if I got a problem and I can't sort it, I tend to carve it all out and, and do it all again. Yeah. I, I think I, one, I, one, of the, one of the biggest things that we've improved ourselves on yeah. is the fact that we now um, put the picture. I think that helps a lot. Planted on. Yeah, we actually, because we put I, the, I the image. Can explain to people how you glue it on? No, I haven't explained the process. It'd probably be an, a useful one for a lot of people to know how we yeah. go about doing that. Do you want to do you want to explain it? Well, or you can see can, there. Do you want to demonstrate it? You can see like the paper that is, is quite, starting to come up. It's quite loose there. Yeah. But it's good because you can see which lines. Whereas uh, often, you know, we used to use carbon paper. Yeah. So you um, draw it on with carbon paper. And you know that's quite effective, carbon paper. Yeah. But it's good as well. I find it if you are. <laughs> Because with the, what we do, you, you basically, you explain the method, you glue it on with P, PVA glue, yeah. basically, isn't it? You PVA stick it onto glue. the wood. We put, um, the, we put the glue on the uh, back. I'll, I'll find the drawing now, here. Yeah, um, uh, that's, that's what we do now. I find with that, it's great as long as you've got time to wait for the glue to dry. So if I'm looking to do a job quickly and I want to get on with it immediately, then the carbon paper's better because you can just draw it on there and get and get going so just depends what you're working on which method is better to use also as well uh for anybody who's doing it more commercially who anybody who's getting into doing it more in a business uh if you produce a template then you just mark around the template and you can just reproduce whatever you're doing we There's got that there you go and then you've got a pot of pva glue there you go there pot go. of pva glue you got the uh, what would you call that? The drawing of yeah, our. That's your, that's your I'm thinking the that's on our website. It's something like Celtic Dreams on our website. So you got the drawing of it. But you turn it over and you glue. You put the glue on. You put the glue on that surface. Put your glue there. And then. See glue. Then you. The 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 water then because we keep the glue brush in water. Yeah. You you put water then on the wood itself. Yeah. And then just glue it on. And um, stick it on there, and then you've and got all of you end up with your drawing like that. And you've got all those guidelines then for, a, for you to you follow. Know, it's, a, it's a big help for us because we can um, produce. Just means when what we can do, we can mark out if we've got a large piece of wood and we want to mark out, say, a dozen spoons. Yeah, so what you do then, and there we are, photocopy your designs, cut around it, mark it out on the wood. And away you go. So yeah, does the job. Yeah. There we are. All little sort of um, tricks of the trade, I suppose you'd call them, wouldn't you? All little methods that you oh, can adopt. Friend, when I did my apprenticeship, they told me there were no tricks of the trade. It's just hard work. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. To be honest with you, that, that was one that we learnt ourselves. We learnt from observing, you know, other other wood carvers because originally we were only we always used templates we always used carbon paper but actually sticking it onto uh, the the wood itself that that's only something that we started ourselves in the last yeah. few years yeah. isn't it because we'd seen other wood carvers and we thought yeah that's a good idea but a good example for how you're always learning you know we've always got something to learn and it's great, we, we learn things from, from yourselves. Just today, somebody asked me a question about um, scroll saw blades. They said they were saying about how the make, you know, the maker of the individual scroll saw blades can make a, a huge difference. And it had never even, never registered with me because we have here in the, in the UK, a sort of a company associated with Hegner, and we've always just gone to them. But yeah, quite right. The, the the maker of the blades can have quite a, quite an influence. Right, we're well on now with this twist. Sorry to interrupt the yeah, game. Yeah, no, you interrupt. I mean, that's interrupt. another important thing as well. Symmetry. With the template. Yeah. Because we like to get our spoons nice and symmetrical. Um, yeah, they don't have to be symmetrical, no. but that's what we always do. But it can help. So yeah, yeah. fold your page in half. When I design the spoon, a lot of the bespoke spoons. Yeah. Um, I, the first thing that I do, I draw a line down the centre of the page to try and get symmetry. Um, sometimes, for instance, I mean, we're doing the design that I mentioned. It's got the New Zealand fern, and um, sorry, I mentioned where the design's going, not not the actual design. And it's got a daffodil, 
Well, those are sort of side by side, not sort of straightforward to get those symmetrical, yeah. but the spoon, the overall love spoon but is symmetrical. Back on the point about symmetry there, right? Yeah. We like to get our spoons symmetrical, symmetrical. right? But, but no rules, For no somebody rules. else, right? It could be that they always want it to be... Asymmetrical. Yeah. yeah. And, and that can be their style. Style, yeah, they spot on. never do one symmetrical. Spot you know? on. And, and so they, that becomes your sort of, uh, what would you call it, your signature then, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, what you sort that's of become known style. as. And, and that's, that's, that's nice an interesting thing. thing. That is an interesting thing because, um, I mean, us doing designs symmetrically, like when I design it, I still do it symmetrically. And, and the reason that I do that is, is, is basically because of dad's background um you know it wouldn't worry me as much personally but being brought up like that um whenever i would sort of show a design to dad he he sort of rather me get it symmetrical and again it's not a bad thing because it's it's a it's, it's sort of pleasing to the eye if it's symmetrical just refocus that one there we are. If you check with Yelly on that one, that that's all okay. Yeah, if it is symmetrical, it does it does help. Um, I think someone's got a comment there. Should we see? Oh. Uh, find out there what they. Can, can I just say before? Yeah. We talk, we're talking yeah. about yes, symmetrical, and then that we, one is symmetrical, and then we contradict ourselves. Yeah. So you know, there's but there's no hard and fast rule about it. There never is. No. But what I would also say with that. It is still symmetrical in terms of it's 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 that even you know we got that even that balance down down the middle of it. There we are. Can you read that one there, did? Yeah, Mark. How are you? Sorry. Oh, hello again, Mark. Hey, hope you guys are all well. Yeah, we. Yeah, fine. we're doing well. Thanks. Yeah, good to hear from you again. Yeah, we're making progress. This was sorry. Better late than never. That's absolutely yeah. Yeah, hope all's well with you as well, Mark. Yeah, we're making progress here. Our spoon for the year is 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 taking shape, is the thing. So yeah, we're making we are making progress on it. We're just finishing off. I think for today's demonstration, what we're going to do, I'm going to finish off the basic um, the basic part of the twist, and I think then next week uh, we'll probably go on to having a look at the birds one or the other or both depending on time and then I'll probably come back to the twist and shape it in the same way that we've shaped the top half of the twist and then we got the the sanding of it as well we got our padlock I, I I'm, I'm still undecided in between here if we're going to leave that as a a flat finish or if we're going to put anything else I don't know I'll put well, it across to you do, do, do you got any ideas still, you know <laughs> Fortunately, we've still um, got a bit of time, haven't we? So. we? We're still six, seven weeks before the end of the year, so it, it's always nice to have something. Um, got a bit of space in there, you yeah, know, you, ne you never know, do you? Something crops up, you never know That's right. what you might, might want to record. Yeah, so yeah, you can record all sorts of different things. So it's certainly Before, before anybody to... mentions it, we're not getting involved in any politics. No, but, so. but it's, it's, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of. Um, scope to yeah to absolutely something that uh, is important maybe um before the end of the year yeah absolutely yeah so we can see we nearly got the end of that twist we're just going to get the depth on these last two i'm quite pleased with how this is coming on good it's taking it's shape as well it's only you know those people watching you the way you're carving right oh, there's another comment on the way you're already. carving dave is 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 so individual then it really is the way you hold your chisel yeah it's it's sort of um you know you're fortunate you've got that grip um but it's, for a lot of people it'd probably be counterintuitive yeah. i i mean i would be using the chisel the other way around yeah and i would be using a mallet yeah as well so um it's all about finding your um style yeah absolutely i uh I just sort of, I'll be honest, in terms of, you know, grips and methods and stuff like that, I just do what comes naturally. Okay. Uh, what, 
what time do you normally start, Dave? Five o'clock. We, we normally start, yeah, around five o'clock. That's that's our sort of kickoff time that we aim for. The biggest reason where we've been later at different times is technical trouble. But so far today, we've been we've been able to. Um, yeah, we, we haven't had any sort of technical technical problems. But, but um, usually, usually it's about five o'clock. Five o'clock, yeah, that's what we aim for is, is five o'clock. The reason we do that is because we're, we're always looking for a time that, um, that sort of suits, as they refer to it, on both sides of the pond. That's right, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're sort of looking for a time where if there's anybody uh, stateside who's who's interested in what we're working on, they can see it, and anybody here as well in in the UK, it's it's at a reasonable time for for you know both here and and there. But um, thank you from Mark for that. No, no, you're welcome. Thanks for supporting us. Much appreciated. And uh, yeah, looking forward at some stage to to see see your work and see see how you're getting on because it's always great to see. What others are doing and uh, how they're they're progressing. There we are. I think that's that's some decent progress again. I'm I like this twist. It's a style of uh, spoon. We've done this on a few bespoke love spoons with this Celtic twist. I, I we're very lucky actually with the love spoon. Whilst this is a more modern development to put Celtic symbols in there. I, I love Celtic symbols, and I think we're really lucky um, to have that sort of Celtic heritage. And it also helps, um, uh, it helps something else as well, Neil. It, it gives you a little bit of strength. Yes, on, on the that's right, because we've got that surround now. Is, is, is protecting, yeah. It's protecting the love swim. But I, I just think that it in frames, terms of... It frames it as well. It, yeah, it does. It gives you... It, everything's framed inside it, and, um, and it's enjoyable. It's something for anybody learning to carve... Um, it's, you know, we, we recommend you start off with those flowers and things like that. That's what we sort of say for starting off. But I think having a little go at a Celtic, a Celtic twist, a knot, yeah. I think that's another one to have a go at. And if you're looking to get, you know, have a go at doing your first Celtic twist, what you can do, um, you can just drill holes, just drill simple holes, and then use your gouge to mark it out. But you could use as well that method of sticking it, sticking the design on the wood as well. If you've got something like a scroll saw, even better, you can use that to cut the outline shape. There we are. That's our um, live stream for today. Thank you all for, for joining us. We'll be back again, as always. Yeah, around about Sundays, five o'clock. That's what we're sticking to. But thanks for watching. And I think that's the first live stream that we've got through without any technical hitches. Good. Thank you all again.